outfit of the day. It's the old fit from Amazon. But I think it's still looking good overall. What up, cut ups? Today's video, I'm just pretty much gonna be talking about how it was when I first started to get into the world of modeling. You know, and it's for anybody out there that's thinking about doing it, um, I say go for it, okay? So I just wanted to say that I appreciate some of the comments um, that people have left me saying that they feel like I should become a, um, a plus size model. Well, I, I don't really think that that's, that's a bad thing. I think it's really a great compliment that, you know, some people feel that way about me. Honey, if I knew where to, or how to get into all that stuff again, I probably would. But honestly, I know how to get into it, but is it really worth all of the stress and stuff? It's, it's a lot of stuff that comes with it, you know, a lot. And to be honest, guys, I'm 47. I don't have that type of energy anymore. You know, I broke off into modeling when I was just a teenager, okay? And that's pretty much what I want to talk about in this video. Um... I first started modeling, I think I was 15, 15, 15 or 16 years old. And um, I started out by going to John Robert Powers. I don't know if you all remember this, this modeling school, but it's, it, this is old, guys. This was a long time ago, okay? But it was called John Robert Powers, and that is pretty much the school I went to. It's like an etiquette school, but a modeling school, too. You can Google it. I don't know if they're still open <laughs> or not. I think, I think it could be, but I'm not, I'm not sure. But I started there, you know, with just the schooling and learning how to pivot and, you know, the full pivot, the half pivot, learning what that was. Um, just pretty much learning, you know, the, I'm going to say the academics of modeling. Okay. That's pretty much what I learned at that school. And I honestly can't remember how long of, how long it was, the course, but I did have to pay. I did pay for it. I don't remember how much, but I did initially pay. Um, when I was done at John Robert Powers, I had already had, before I was done, I had modeling gigs, you know, lined up. And... I just remember being in a Boston store. Boston stores are now closed. But I remember being in a Boston store and I was doing something called freeze modeling. And that's pretty much where you, <laughs> you're in the display window at a department store or wherever and you are freeze modeling. Like you're posing and holding it. You just try to be still like but not blinking, just like stillness, stillness. And it was really funny, guys, because there were quite a few people walking back and forth, looking <laughs> at me like they weren't sure if I was a real person or a mannequin. So that was kind of funny. I did get thrown off track a little bit because I was laughing. It was funny, you know, to see people double back it was funny but what I'm saying is I, I did like it you know at that time and you know I was much younger I had a whole lot more energy and it went from the little freeze modeling at department stores to actual working with um, designers like hair designers clothes designers locals from here in Milwaukee but I did fashion shows and it was okay. I did fashion shows for hair and clothes and I just really liked it. And at that time I wore all, it was all my natural hair unless it was something that was um, dramatized, you know, for dramatics for a hair show or something like that. But overall I liked it. It was a lot of fun. Um, 
I met a lot of good people, you know, during that time in my life. Sorry about, about that, guys. The windows are open. Um, I did. I met a lot of people, you know, uh, that that was okay. It was some good people, you know. There was some bad people, too, you know, to be honest. There were a lot of drugs, you know. I was only a teenager, but it was a lot of drugs, you know, uh, that, that was, you know, um, in the modeling world. And, you know, I, I didn't partake in it, you know, um, initially, okay? I didn't partake in it initially. I was young. But I did model. I was fortunate enough to have modeled into my, like, mid-20s. I'm going to say, like, like mid-20s, early to mid-20s. And then it, I pretty much stopped. But I was fortunate enough to even work that long. And... I honestly didn't know that I was going to be good at, you know, uh, walking and on the runway and demanding attention. And, and I was doing it, you know, and that was cool. But I know and I always knew that I was just at the height requirement, you know, because you, you do need to be taller. You know, I remember making a video. I don't remember when it was, but... I know in the title I put, um, I'm glad I'm tall, like in parentheses, I'm glad I'm tall. And, you know, a couple people really got mad. They got into their feelings about me saying that. But what you have to understand is in the world of modeling, 5'7 is the very, very minimum and really is considered short for modeling. But I was just right there at 5'7, so I was lucky to get some stuff, but the taller you are, uh, the better your chances are in modeling. And you know, everybody that knows, you don't even have to know that much about modeling knows that, you know, taller people look better in their clothes. And just let me say this, you know, I'm not putting anyone down out there that might be shorter, but I'm looking at it from a modeling world, a modeling perspective. So don't take this personal. Okay, if you do, you choose to do that on your own. Because I'm clearly telling you it has nothing to do with you personally. Okay? And go look up, research some stuff so that you can know that what I'm saying is true. The taller you are, the better. Period. When it comes to the world of modeling. It is what it is. Okay. All I know is that I met some great people. I met some bad people too, you know. I met some and had to work with people I didn't like, you know, people I wanted to fight. I'm going to be honest, but I made it work, y'all, and it was great. Don't get me wrong. So I just wanted to talk about um, the peer pressure of modeling. It, it was it was extreme. Like I said, it was drugs and, you know, it was uh, people that was just in that fast lane. I was way young. You know, I was too young, just a teenager. So I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't hang around those people, but I knew about it. And when I got a little bit older, I guess, like in my 20s, over 21, really, let me see, what around, uh, it was before 21, but it, I, it was pretty close to my 21st birthday, but... That's when I pretty much started to dibble and dabble in things that was a little bit harder than marijuana, like powder. So, hmm, kind of changed my perspective about modeling. And um, eventually I did get out of it, guys. But I just wanted to say that if there are people, and I say people because you know it's for men, men and women, if there's people out there that's interested in modeling, please go for it. Um, everybody's experience is going to be different. There are going to be some typical things that happens, period, in, in that lifestyle. But that's just how it is. And you have to accept that. But overall, if you feel like you got what it takes to make it in that world, go for it. Okay, do not hesitate and don't let anybody stop you. You know, if you're too young, hopefully you have a parent or somebody who, 
who is, you know, in your corner and supports you and wants you to win and, you know, whatever else, still protect you at the same time, though. Because I honestly wish that I did have that, you know, when I was younger. Uh, my mama was around, but I ain't gonna tell y'all. <laughs> okay. She was around, but she wasn't around me at that particular time, and I ain't gonna go into that. It was kind of a dark place, but I didn't have my mom there, you know, um, and I wish that I did. So for the people that's too young, you know, hopefully you have supportive parents and, you know, um, that will protect you, you know, and, and, and this lifestyle, the lifestyle of modeling, because it can be fierce and you can end up uh, with your self-esteem all out of tech. From listening to people and you know you have to know you you have to know your worth you have to know your j just you have to be confident in knowing that you don't want to get on the wrong track you don't want to go down the wrong road so when you know that and you know that you really just want to stay focused and work and make some money the money was great by the way and make some money then you know that's what you really should do but I just want to say if it's something that you want go for it always and and I'm, I'm not just talking about modeling I mean just anything that you feel like you may want go for it you know don't let anybody stop you just do it okay so with that being said I want to address uh, something else um in this video and it basically is about um post-op care stay tuned this battery is low but anyway guys someone just recently wanted me to talk a little bit more about uh post-op care and i am about mm, maybe 10 or 11 months um post-op I think I had my surgery in July. Like, I think it was July 22nd or July 23rd of 2019. So, I really didn't think it, it would take, you know, a whole video to talk about this. Because, um, I, I really don't do much, you know. I don't do a lot for, you know, my post-op care. I mean... Honestly, I think I'm still healing. Um, I'm not going to say I'm having complications, but I do still itch. Like my wound, my surgery wound. Oh, shit. Just like just right now. It, it's weird. You know, it's, it's hard to explain, but sometimes where the incision is for my tummy tuck, it hurts sometimes. And it also itches. Like, I don't know if that stabbing pain is from uh, the liposuction, you know, because they do go in there kind of vigorously when they're doing that. And I don't know if maybe a nerve was poked or whatever. I don't know. But all I know is that I, it's very itchy sometimes. Not all the time. <sighs> like, sometimes I can feel it. Sometimes... For the most part, my stomach is numb. I'm just gonna show you guys. Okay. This part of my tummy right here is numb, but this is my belly button right here, guys. And underneath, all right here, it's numb. It's numb. It is numb. I mean, I can feel it. The wound is, is right here, guys. The wound is right here. And some, it's just weird because sometimes I can feel it, a little bit of the pain, but it's sometimes I just feel numbness. That numbness, like I said, it's, it's all up here, y'all. It's all up here. So I don't know how long it's going to go on. I, 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 I've never had surgery, so I don't know. All I know is that sometimes it does catch me off guard. And those pains are stabbing. I mean, stabbing pains. And it, it doesn't last long, but it's just that why am I having it? You know? Hmm. So, 
I did reach out to the doctor that did my surgery and um, he said that maybe there's some inflammation on the inside that's causing it to itch. How the hell do I scratch it <laughs> on the inside? <laughs> so what I do is when, when I feel it being itchy like that, I'll just 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 push push on it. Just just push it. Trying to relieve the itch, but just push on it a bit and nah, I guess it goes away. But you know, it's not so extreme that it bothers me every day, but I still feel like when is it gonna all be over? You know, it'll be a whole year this coming July for me. So I've heard that, you know, some women can have complications for uh, six months up to a year and after. So maybe I'm going to be one of those women that, you know, have, you know, some issues after a year or maybe it's going to take longer than a year for me to really heal. And if so, so be it. You know, what other choice do I have? So what I do... Um, for my care, it's not very much. I rub um, just cocoa butter, you know. I use that gold bond. And I just, I rub it on my wound. And just, I think that's some pretty good stuff. It does moisturize it. And I think that it does seep into my skin to the point where it, it doesn't itch as bad. So, that's all I use. I I don't really have any other... Um, you know, post-op care that, that I really do. I, I really don't. So besides putting cocoa butter on my incision, um, I don't do that much, you know. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, I know you said that you really haven't saw a lot of, um, you know, information about post-op care, but if you really look on YouTube, there is a lot of um, videos about post-op care. Um, I know because I, I watched a lot of that before I had my surgery. So, I mean, I wanted to know, you know, I, I was scared like like anybody that's going in for um, a dramatic, uh, life-changing surgery. I was scared like anybody would be, but what you have to do is just, you know, do your research and um, hopefully pick a good doctor and wish for the best. <laughs> uh, you know, pray for the best. And, you know, hopefully everything will work out for you. But um, I don't remember your name. I'm sorry. I don't remember the name. But you'll know who you are, okay? And just go to YouTube. Okay, and, and look at videos about post-op care. There are a lot out there, okay? So, all right, I, I think I'm going to get going now, guys. I just wanted to put it out there. So, all right. Bye. Okay. Now, I just wanted to throw this out there. It, it has nothing, nothing to do with uh, post-op care or modeling, but... What I'm trying to do now, guys, is just not gain so much weight. And I'm sure that a lot of us out there are trying to do the same thing, okay? With the quarantine and just being stuck in a damn house, uh, it ain't a lot to do. It's not, it's not a lot to do. But you got to do some stuff. If you don't want to sit up there and gain weight, you're going to have to move, move it around, get your heart rate up. So, sometimes I don't have the motivation to do that. I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I don't. But since I have started with and gotten my little barbells, I have. I've, I've been keeping it up. Even when I don't feel like doing it. Because I notice that once I start lifting the weights, I notice that my heart rate is going up. And then, for some reason, it makes me feel like I got to go to the bathroom. I don't know why. But it do. I don't know. But maybe that's a good thing, you know, to get out all of the damn food you didn't ate. Now, guys, I've been eating a lot um, for the past couple days. 
And I said, today, okay, I'm going to take a diet pill and my, I might take it for a couple days uh, just to maintain or slim back down um, or get back to where I was. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to sit up in here, like I said, and, and, and become a butterball, you know, no. Um, somebody left a comment. Uh, I think it was Daryl. Hey, Daryl. Uh, talking about... Um, don't gain, don't eat too much of that pudding. You're going to gain weight. Well, I'm glad to tell you that I really was eating the cookies because they were soft. I really was e enjoying eating the cookies out of that pudding. The majority of that pudding is still in the refrigerator. I basically picked out the cookies. So that's pretty much it. I may be throwing it away today, guys, honestly, because <coughs> I knew when I made it, this is a lot. I'm not eating all this. So, <laughs> I don't know why my cousin didn't give me a smaller recipe. But anyway, try to move, guys. Try to get your heart rate up. Try to uh, get some exercise in, okay? Even if it's just little minor stuff, it don't matter. Get the heart rate pumping. Get the heart rate up, okay? So that you're not just sitting there eating and eating and eating and just shoveling it in. And not and it not coming out like it's supposed to because it's too much in there. It's all mixed up and messed up, and it need to come out. And you know when you eating so much and you piling food on top of other food, you get constipated because that food ain't came out yet because you're still eating. Slow down, okay? Or try to watch some of the things you eat now today. I'm probably gonna have to do some some uh, tuna or I don't know something lighter some turkey sausage or something, you know, it can't be bacon, you know, and I ate bacon, man, I went shopping the other day, and I got four packs of bacon, I left one out and put the other three in the freezer, I love bacon, I love it, and everybody knows how bad it is for you, <laughs> still tastes good, but everybody know how bad it is for you, I love it, I got three packs of, you know, like I said, in the freezer, but you got to really be careful. You know, it's good, but it's all mostly fat, you know. So, y'all just don't know. Every bite like, that I take when I have me some bacon, y'all, every bite, it just be so good. I just close my eyes and just savor each bite and the flavor going down my throat, honey. It's just, it just be so good, okay? It is what it is. I love bacon, but I got to slow up. So... Today, what I'm going to do is eat light, guys. And I think what I'm going to do is just probably go, I bought a whole bunch of um, uh, tuna creations. And I think I'm going to have one right now. So, <laughs> maybe I should wait. Maybe I should wait, guys, and eat a little bit later. Uh, maybe. kind of hungry right now. I took that pill about... 9 30 this morning y'all i'm kind of hungry a little bit so i think what i'm gonna do is go get me something to eat stay tuned okay guys so i, I don't really know if this is considered like a mukbang or not guys it's just a snack really but this is what i'm talking about the tuna creations and this flavor is hickory smoked and this is my favorite i just love 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 this and they have other kinds like the lemon pepper i did a video on this a long time ago but this is the lemon pepper they have ranch and you know all different kinds but all of these are hickory smoked because that's what i like <laughs> so i got quite a few of them i ate about three of them already but I swear by these. I mean, if you are oh, trying to just have a little snack and eat too much, you don't want to eat too much, get this. If you like tuna. If you like tuna. So this is what I do. Surprise the cat don't come in here while I'm doing this. She might be behind this couch. This is what it looked like. Tuna. 
It's just smoked, smoked flavor, hickory flavor, yum. Mm. Good to me. I love it. Mmm. 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 It's the hickory smoke flavor. Yummy. Mmm. Mmm. -mm -mm. Oh. So I see they have more than 20 varieties. They got bacon ranch, jalapeno. Mango Chipotle, hmm. lemon dill, buffalo style, mm. and the zesty lemon pepper, the one I just showed you. Come on, cat, I see you. Come on. I see you. Here. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, baby. Here. I knew her butt was coming, y'all. I knew she was coming. Come on, cat. Stop playing. A little greedy butt. You know you greedy. I'm gonna put you on blast, kitty. Look at her, y'all. Come on, eat. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, kitty. The food right there, y'all. She gonna come get it. I don't know why she's trying to play. And ease up on it. She knows she want it. Get baby girl kitty. Gonna need it, kitty. It's okay, baby. It's a pretty girl. Oh, look at you, baby. Look at you, kitty. You're a baby, kitty. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. It's a pretty girl. It's a pretty kitty. Gonna eat. <laughs> She's something else, y'all. She's we smelling it and huffing. Like she don't like it. And I know she do. She helped me eat up at least two or three packs already. <laughs> so I know she like it. And so do I. See, so she already finished that. Just that fast. And if I let her, she'll eat the whole damn pack up. She will. She'll eat the whole pack. Mm. This is so good. This is a good little snack. Mm, get dirty. Here, cat. Here, baby. Hmm. Baby girl. Get it. My cat's so spoiled, and so she's so spoiled. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is good though. <laughs> it really is good. I mean, anytime you can eat it right out of the pack, it's good. Mm -hmm. story time for y'all. Y'all ain't gonna believe it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I got the call this morning. I couldn't believe it. Let me shut up because I ain't gonna go into it in this video. There's already enough stuff going on in this video. I'll make another video about it. And I'm not gonna say who the actual person is. I'm, I'm explaining that too in the video. I'm not gonna explain who it is. It's a real person though. And that they're actually in effect right now as we speak. Moving around. On the highway. Mm. <laughs> y'all ain't gonna believe this one. Y'all not gonna believe it. I know y'all gonna have a lot to say, though. Y'all gonna be like, what? No way. <laughs> During the whole pandemic? Right. Mm -hmm. Here, cat. Mm. Yeah. No, baby. Look how much I got there. It's just a perfect little snack to get the hungries off of you. You know, to keep your stomach from growling. But, um, I'm also having this, too. 
I love my mandarin oranges. Give me my mandarin oranges anytime. I like Dole the best, but I will take generic. This is a generic one. But I do like Dole. Oh, I like the ones from Aldi's too. I love the ones from Aldi's. Mmm. Juice on my nose. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, I feel guilty, y'all. When I know I ate a whole bunch of food and stuff, I feel guilty. Like, you know damn well. You should have ate that damn, all that food. And I know it, too. So I'm kind of making up now, guys. At least for a couple of days, a few days. I don't want all that food getting stuck in my system and can't get it out and all that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, mm. to help with that, you know, um, eat your fruits or drink them. Eat them or drink your fruits. I like gray hair up there. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> oh, just, just eyelash itching. Y'all know I love my little lashes, but shit, what the hell? Some itching. Oh, Ooh, look at them, y'all. They got a long. I, I wore the ones that got the little extended, little kind of extended on, on the end. Ooh. I probably should have pulled this one down a little bit. Oh, let me stop. <laughs> Crazy lady. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Mm. Tasty. Almost done. Mm, almost done. This was so good. I should got a whole damn case. Oh shit, that one dropped. Mm, I want to get dirty. But you know what? Me and my cousin. Shit. Me and my cousin was having a conversation about, because we was going to different stores and stuff the other day when I went shopping. And we was talking about how some stores, mostly in the hood, you can't really buy as much as you want. But then other stores, mostly not in the hood, there's no limit on items that you can buy. So we thought that was odd. Like at the Dollar Tree, crazy. They was telling us at the Dollar Tree, you had a limit on stuff. But then, going to the Dollar Tree is a little bit further out. No limit. Why do you think that is? Anybody know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all. I have to. Somebody finally got back to me. Um... I was trying to find me a Facebook person, nail tech, okay? And somebody finally got back to me today. And um, I'm going to call her and see, you know, what her rates are. She said for extra, of course, you know, extra coming to your house. It is what it is, but you pay for the convenience, okay? Pay for the convenience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So 
so good. Mm. Anyway, I'm gonna go off to the story time. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Thank y'all for watching. Bye.